guys, welcome to Live Joy Travel. I'm Jess and you'll never guess where I find myself today. You guessed it. We are in the shop of Jacobo and Maria Angeles. They are the creators of the alebrijes that came out in the movie Coco. So come along with us today for a special interview with Jacobo and to take a tour through this beautiful shop. So come with me and let's go check out some alebrijes in a beautiful exposition at the end. and he is going to be our tour for the day and I hope that you can come with us virtually as well. So let's take the first step into the first stage of this tour. First of all, let's start talking about the wood, the kind of wooding we are using, which is like this. It's called copal. In Mexico, we have around 83 species of them. They grow up all over Mexico, but just 42 of them, they grow up here in Oaxaca. They spend around 40 or 60 years to grow up. Wow. That's the best time until we can find pieces with more, more shape. Oh, wow. Using the imperfections or using the shape of the tree, it's how we can imagine in animals inside. First stage of the alebrije. That's correct. That's this is the tree. How it's gonna look. Let okay. me show you how we paint it. The colors that we are using are natural colors, natural vibes. Oh, okay. They are so colors from different things. Okay, so completely organic. It's correct. Wow. So, fruits, uh, insects, plants, earth, so they are the ones that we are going to use. Okay. For example, the same tree gives us a pigment, and it's like this. It's a brown color. Oh, okay. wow. Once you dry it, toast it, and ground it, the branch of the tree that's the, the, okay, the bark. So that's the bark of the branch of the tree. That's amazing. That's correct. Now, to paint it on the wood, what we have to do is mix it with a natural dilutant. We are going to use lime juice. The citric acid of lime juice will give us a first color in something. Like this. Some drops of them. Let's mix it. And this is the first color that we are gonna get. If you paint it, the wood will absorb it. Okay. It's not a permanent color. What we have to do is mix it with 50% honey and 50% the sap of the tree. Oh, wow. Getting from here, from this, a permanent color. So that's honey right that's there. That's honey. Already mix it with the sap of the tree. The two they two they are going to make the color permanent. Okay. What we are going to do also to change the color, it's mix it with a little bit of limestone. Yeah. We're going to change the pH. It even changes the pigment. It's correct and it's changing the pigment. You can oh, do black. Light, black yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yes. Nothing toxic about Nothing this. Nothing toxic, it's that's correct. That's amazing. Then we can change the colors for example, when we mix two or more pigments in one, and it's this indigo, indigo, it's a plant. It's a plant. It's a plant okay. coming from the coast of the state, getting blue. Wow, that is amazing. Or with zinc oxide on the red, getting lilac, lavender. Lavender, a little lilac. Here. Yeah. Wow. Mixing them, it's getting a third reaction. Wow. One of the, the colors that we are doing, it's coming from fruits. Pomegranate has a strong juice. If we just mix it with honey and the reddish color, 
the reaction it's gonna change by the pH. Wow! Getting green. That is marvelous. Yeah. Look at that. This kind of green color could be mixed with the cochineal. That's how you get purple. Yes. Wow! That's how we do the purple color with more zinc oxide. It's another kind of lab. Yeah, you have a different kind of lab. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Wow. And that's how we're gonna use, or how we're gonna do different colors using different. Things. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Just coming down generations on generations from pre Hispanic beginnings, guys. That's, that says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> their soul even when they pass away they use it to guide the, their, their energy so please open your eyes Animal is yeah. the protector is the chameleon. Chameleon, yeah. okay. What the, the characteristics of the chameleon is being like uh, like what the people feel they will feel like empathy. That's me, I'm yeah. a total empath. It's so by the year you have the personality of the dog. It, but the same personality, yours were more like a psychologic doctor. <laughs> you can <laughs> listen problems and give uh, advices to, to resolve those problems. Wow, that so is the mixture of those two animals, like the, the for example, your chameleon with the dog, will give us your nawal, okay. your animal protector for years. Right. Let me show you how we carve them. Let's go to the second part of this story. Yeah. Let's go do some carving. Look at the beautiful ground. I got the flowers. They will select a piece of wood and depends on the idea that they have in their mind is what they're going to found on their pieces. Oh, wow. So it's like this one, it's a mother of armadillo with his baby. Oh, very you know? Texan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see, here it's an example of the piece. Oh, yeah. See? And it's because it's a big, big trunk of the piece oh, that wow. we needed to make just one piece of wood. The kind of tools that they are using are machetes, chisels, and knives. Oh, Machete, wow. for example, is to do the bigger cuts. Mark where could be the head, where could be the legs, part of the shape. And if you see, they have like complicated parts. It's in there where they can use like chisels okay. with different kind of cuts. Curved cut and flat cuts. Okay. Then with the knife, they do the finer details. Wow. But, I have a question for you. You said that it takes about two to three weeks just to carve it. Yeah. How long does it sit out in the sun? <coughs> Another week. Another week so that you're already at four weeks. Yeah. And then I'm you on. bring it back up here. Yeah. And what's the next process once you bring it back? Let it white. Let it wait in here. Let, let it dry, dry completely. Just let it dry completely yeah. for another what, week, two weeks? One well, piece like this size, the ones that we have like an example, it's gonna take us around nine or ten months. Wow, you are kidding. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, very, very lengthy to just yeah, get one yeah. of these big pieces out. Slow. So correct. it's correct. Wow, all right, so then once you have a piece like this uh -huh. and it's spent time up there, what's the next step? What's the next step? They will seal it, they will cover all the cracks, and they will cover with the first base of color. The first base of color, okay. Maybe three weeks in here. They are in a process to be observed.
surrounded by a lot of talent. Yeah, <laughs> but let me show you part of the finish as well. Yeah, let's go look at it. brand and the info for the piece. Wow, total art. Yeah, total art. Because they're very popular. It's correct. guantecitos de clavitos con oro, entonces cada pieza tiene un movimiento muy especial porque cuando veas jugar los juegos de pelota mixteca, los hombres que se ponen a jugar este juego tienen unas contorsiones bastante interesantes, entonces de esa manera nosotros fuimos generando estas piezas el día de hoy tenemos esta expresión, este juego de pelota que los alebrijes o las tonas y nahuales están jugando la pelota mixteca porque queremos también que la gente, los nuevos jóvenes, se interesen en seguirla practicando. Porque como es un trabajo, es un esfuerzo de los pueblos de conservarlo, sí. pocos uh, jovencitos como que tienen ese interés, les interesa más como el fútbol, el sí. béisbol, porque están más patrocinados, porque son más este, publicitados, uh -huh. pero la adrenalina está en los dos, sí. tanto en el fútbol como en la pelota mixteca. Entonces yo quiero que los jovencitos se enamoren otra vez de esos juegos tenemos en México, que son orgullosos de Mesoamérica, de México y de tantos lugares, pero que no, no están agarrando un deporte de otro país, sino es el deporte de México. Entonces, empujarlo mexicano. Exactamente, eso es lo que queremos, eso es lo que queremos. Ese sentido de pertenencia que se sientan orgullosos de este juego y que los jovencitos vuelvan a tener interés. Y si, hay, si llega por medio de esto alguien que le interese patrocinarlo eso, pero que sea para esa federación que, que está, la sí, nosotros estamos felices con que ganemos llegar el mensaje a la gente que entiende y practique y se enamore de este trabajo. Yeah, este. Sí. Entonces bueno. están hechos con madera de copal, los dibujos son dibujos zapotecos que nosotros tenemos aquí en el pueblo, tratamos de que sea el juego con su cancha de piedra como allá en Motilbá, sí. pero este es una exposición que va a durar tres meses. De verdad los esperamos aquí en San Martín Tilcajete, en el estado de Oaxaca. 
donde hemos participado en varios proyectos, uno de los más recientes es Los Guardianes en Nueva York, sí. en la Plaza Rockefeller, no sé si sí. lo vieron, son los gigantes. Sí, sí. Y quería hablarte de eso. ¿Cómo se siente ser un símbolo para los mexicoamericanos? Estás reintroduciendo a la cultura y estás haciendo cosas que jamás pudimos haber imaginado como alebrijes en el medio de Rockefeller. ¿sabes? Sí, bueno. <risa> Nosotros somos muy contentos de participar en ese proyecto, pero lo más lindo, nos sentimos orgullosos de ser mexicanos, de compartir con ustedes los mexicoamericanos parte de sus raíces, parte de ese sentido de pertenencia que existe en Oaxaca y en nuestros pueblos y que tiene en todo México, ¿no? sí. como la gastronomía tan rica y tan linda que existe en Oaxaca, pero también así tienen rinconcitos hermosos todo nuestro país, playas, comida. Entonces, yo los invito a que amigos mejor americanos deseen saber un poquito más de su raíz cuando te tomen esa selfie esa foto con esos piezas gigantes lo primero que venga a su mente es México y segundo descubrir México sí. y tercero si vienen a Oaxaca y si llegan al taller sería lindo sí. compartir con nosotros esta experiencia no experiencia absolutamente formidable sí. muchísimas gracias a nos hace sentir muy orgullosos de estar aquí en este taller y de estar contigo. Gracias. Cuando pintamos los guardianes, mi hijo puso ahí, porque hicimos en toda la familia y jóvenes aquí del taller juntos, y juntos mi hijo hizo algo muy especial. Dentro de la, de la decoración hay una malla. Okay. Como esa malla que se tiene que saltar, uh -huh. que se tiene que brincar, que no hay límites. Que no hay límites, entonces la malla está abajo, usada por el guardián, porque abriendo camino para ustedes, México americanos. Uniendo. Uniendo, uniendo y abriendo, la, abriendo camino para que no se olvide la cultura. Sí, porque México tiene que recordar, pero su sangre es sangre. mexicana. Correcto. Entonces, aquí los esperamos siempre en Oaxaca, para servir. Una pequeña bendición que es que el sol los ilumine, que el viento los guíe y que el agua y la tierra les dé lo que necesita, donde quiera que estén amigos, nuestro espíritu y nuestro cuerpo está con ustedes, cuídense mucho.